What's up, welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna talk about the difference between a Ruby class variable and a Ruby class instance variable. And uh, yeah, the difference might surprise you a little bit. Uh, actually, maybe not. So the difference is basically inheritance. So for a class variable, uh, all inherited classes will have access to that same variable. For class instance variables, each class that inherits will have a different copy of the variable. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we have a class, uh, we'll use the classic example of animals. So if we have a animal, animal, I don't know why my uh, keyboard wants to type admin. Um, so if let's say we have a class animal and we have a class cat that inherits from animal. Okay, this is in Ruby, right? And if we wanted to set some variable at the class level that might track something about all of the instances, one example might be that we wanna track some count. And so at the class, like inside of the class definition, we can use the double at sign, which makes it look like you're looking at someone or maybe it's looking at you. <laughs> so this is a class variable. And with the class variable, we could define a class method here, uh, self.count, and maybe this just returns count at at count. And we could also define a, an, a setter method for this. So count equals um, some new number at at count is equal to n. Okay, so this is how we might interact with a class level variable. And what we can do is we could write an initialize method that said every time we create a new animal, uh, increment count. Um, so here at the bottom, we might just like print out um, p animal animal dot count, and if we run this code, we will see um, well we're gonna see nothing because what's up? Oh, because we haven't actually uh, initialized any animals. So if we say animal.new, animal.new, and then we run the code, why isn't that doing anything? Okay, animal.new, we see one is printed out. Okay, one is printed out down below. Now if we initialized two animals and then ran this again, now we see two is being printed out. Now if we initialize two animals and a cat, then we would expect three to print out because cat inherits from animal, which means it also inherits the initialize method. And so this will also increment this count. So we are going to initialize an animal, another animal, and then a cat, which is an animal. So we should have the count of three, right? So now we see the number three. So if you wanted to keep count of all the animals in your kingdom, then this might be a way to do it, right? So let's say we have class dog and that inherits from animal also. Um, and if we were to initialize a new dog, dog.new, and then run the same code, now we see four. So we're counting up all of the animals, right? In the animal kingdom of cats and dogs. Uh, but oftentimes you might want a variable that is scoped to each class type. So if we wanted to count how many cats we had, so for instance, if we tried to print out cat.count here, now we're still seeing the number four because cat.count is still accessing that class variable count. And so if we wanted to keep the count of cats and the count of dogs separate, then what we might wanna do is break out from a class variable and instead use a class instance variable. So a class instance variable has just a single at sign, but it's defined at the class level. We can't actually just switch from at count here or to at count here because initialize is an instance method. So in order to access that count variable, we actually need to go through self.class.count. And this is gonna be in fact using the getter and setter methods of the class, of the underlying class. Now here's the other thing. When we initialize this class instance variable on the animal, cat and dog will not actually get access to this new variable. So those are gonna be nil. So when if we try to run this code, it's gonna fail because self.class.count, when we try to increment this, at count inside of cat is, is nil. So we're gonna get a failure here. So let's just try running it. 
this is the error that we're getting. The exception we're getting is initialize method undefined method plus for nil class. And again, that's because right now cat does not have a, uh, a default count set to zero. So it's nil at count is nil inside of here. And so this, this uh, increment does not work. So what we can do is we can actually copy count down inside of both cat and dog. And again, those are starting out with just a single at sign. And now if we run this, we see that there is only one cat and that is correct. So if we were to print out like, um, let's just say like cat count is, uh, is this, um, and then maybe uh, dog count is this. And then we can say animal count is animal. And now we're gonna see that the cat count is one, the dog count is one, the animal count is two. So if we, maybe let's make three dogs or something and then we run this again. So now we have three dogs, two animals and one cat. And now we're tracking the, um, the instance variable at the class level. Okay, so that's the difference between class variables and class instance variables. But let's just look just a tiny bit deeper at like what, uh, what might be going on sort of under the hood or maybe, I don't know. This is just one detail that might help you conceptualize a little bit more about what this is. So if we print out cat.class, what do you think we're gonna see? Cat itself is a class. So what is the class of a class? Uh, let's take a look. So the class of a class is class. <laughs> it is the class class. So a cat, a cat, the cat class is an instance of a class. So let's look at this in more concrete, in, in a more concrete example. So let's say we have frog, and this is going to be a new type of class. We can say frog is equal to class dot new um, do, and you can even write methods in here, def jump or something. And, and now we can say like puts, I'm jumping. And this is one way that you can define classes. And so now frog is an instance of a class because here we're creating a new instance, right? And the type of the instance that we're creating is a class, the class class. And so what we can do is we can say now like, um, uh, like Fred, Fred is a frog. So we can say frog.new and now we can say fred.jump. And this is totally valid. So now we can see I'm jumping is printed out. So each class that we define using this class syntax where we say class and then the name and we can do the little caret where we're inheriting from something. This is actually creating a new instance of the class class. And each of those instances can have their own instance variables. And uh, so yeah, hopefully <laughs> hopefully that helps a little bit. What's What's really surprising is you can also say like, um, p uh, frog dot instance methods dot sort. Let's actually make that puts. And here we can see all of the instance methods on frog, including jump. So that is one of the instance methods on the frog class. Does that make sense? <laughs> I hope so. Uh, similarly, we could we could look at cat here. We could say p cat dot instance variables, and recall that cat is an instance of the class class, and this one is going to be fun too. So you can see that the instance variable at count is an instance variable of the cat class, which is an instance of the class class. Cool, super fun stuff. So that is the difference between class variables and class instance variables in Ruby. Thanks so much for, <laughs> thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.